I gave across just accidentally yesterday came across a story and I never realized that Fannie Willis, uh, the Fulton County District Attorney going after Trump, Fannie Willis, was when she took the stand recently, she was wearing her dress backwards. Have you seen this? There have been stories out there, but, you know, I'm looking for the really big events and things that are happening. I don't always catch, you know, some of these other things. Yeah, she's wearing her dress backwards. And people are out there, and they're showing uh, the dress. Okay, here's here's the dress she's wearing, and here it is, you know, um, online. You can find it if you want to buy this dress. Here's what it looks like. She's wearing it backwards. <laughs> and then you just go, I mean, seriously? So she said, <laughs> she has just been mocked. This is one of the reasons I wasn't aware of it. And I I didn't feel quite so badly because Katie hadn't heard this either. I took it I, I asked Katie yesterday, have you, have you heard this? <laughs> you didn't tell me? You gotta tell me when you see this outrageous stuff. And she goes, No, I haven't seen it. She was wearing her dress backward while she was testifying. <laughs> Now, that doesn't tell you all you need to know about the Georgia case. (laughs) Oh, boy, that just, uh, I don't know how long I laughed. I'm uh, I'm still laughing. (laughs) What's trending now? Add them on Facebook. Let the tweeting begin. The hashtag does that. News and views from Belf's News Gallery. Well, the Supreme Court says that they will decide whether Trump enjoys total immunity for prosecution. So that means likely then that any of these trials about Trump's role in January 6th will not begin before the election. So... And the the left is melting down over this. I mean, the folks at Daily Beast especially have just gone, they're just out of their minds in reacting to this with just absolute rage. And and Axios says there's nothing Trump wants more in this case than a delay. If he wins in November and hasn't been tried before Inauguration Day, there's a good chance he never will be depending on what we hear from the U.S. Supreme Court, remains to be seen. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Also, a judge in Illinois, that's not going to stop the assault on Trump. Certainly, an Illinois judge said yesterday, uh, barring uh, Donald Trump then from that state's Republican presidential primary ballot, and it's it's the same thing, the, the insurrection that occurred on January 6th, and, well, the Supreme Court taking up that, yes, we'll see. Also, the uh, president had his annual physical yesterday. President Biden continues to be fit for duty, said White House physician Kevin O'Connor. He released a memo yesterday following the president's uh, physical He said the president fully executes all of his responsibilities without any exemptions or accommodations, he said. He described Biden as a healthy, active, robust, 81-year-old male, he said. Biden's medical considerations include obstructive sleep apnea and AFib, with a normal ventricular response. So that's obstructive sleep apnea. Ooh, boy, I understand that. CPAP makes a world of difference for me with that. Also, a white powder spilled out of an envelope addressed to the judge who oversaw Donald Trump's civil fraud case. This happened yesterday. It sparked a massive emergency response in Manhattan. So this was, I think, the substance 
spilled onto a New York State court officer's uh, trousers after he opened the envelope. Now, the envelope had been sent to Justice uh, Judge Arthur uh, Engeron from Florida. So the powder was um, deemed safe by early yesterday afternoon. So this must have happened yesterday morning, and by yesterday afternoon they had already found that it, that it was safe. Well, one of the things we're seeing are more of these instances, have you noticed that? More of these high-profile instances of white powder being set. Also, the Supreme Court offered some divided thoughts yesterday over the whether the federal government can ban bump stocks. And there's a case over whether a, a bump stock device is a machine gun as defined by federal law because it's designed for use in converting a rifle into a weapon that fires automatically more than one shot. Well, that's not, you know, a lot of this reporting on this, it's not actually true. What it allows you to do is press the trigger more quickly. And on, on weapons then that have these bump stocks installed, it allows you to depress that trigger many more times and much. Now, we're talking about semi-automatic weapons now. To depress them many more times and more quickly than you otherwise would. So the Supreme Court divided on the issue of bump stocks, and we'll see where that goes. Also, Donald Trump yesterday lost a bid to pause the $454 million civil fraud judgment against him. Um, this is the judgment where Trump was accused and, and of uh, overstating his net worth and real estate values. And I, it, it's, it still just on the surface makes me laugh. He did it to dupe lenders none of whom were defrauded, right? You know that. None of them were defrauded. People who went into business with with Trump wound up making plenty of money. So they invested money with Trump. They got their money back. Plus, nobody was defrauded. Nobody. And yet, that just continues. It's crazy. Bit of a surprise yesterday when Senator Mitch McConnell said he would step down as Republican leader in the Senate in November. And you know what caught my attention there there was? He didn't say he was stepping down from his role in the Senate. He just said he was stepping down as Republican leader in the Senate. He's 82 years old. And I thought, why are you just not announcing your retirement? Why, why, why aren't you just saying, okay, completion of this term or whatever. When I'm done, I'm... Um, so he will step down as Republican leader in the Senate in November, he said. He is the longest-serving Senate caucus leader in U.S. history. And he said he plans to keep his seat in the chamber. He's just giving up the... Senate leadership, and there are a number of stories that are out there this morning. You certainly can find them if you're interested. Fox News, Washington Examiner, a number of other places about the, you know, who the, and you, because you got to wonder then, well, what, what role will John Thune, South Dakota's John Thune, play in the midst of all that? Because, Thune has been part of Republican Senate leadership now for a number of years. And um, certainly there. So there are a number of others then, uh, too, who are already vying for the job. And we'll talk about that this morning. 
Also, Hunter Biden told the lawmakers yesterday he denied involving his father in his business. So he appeared on Capitol Hill yesterday for a closed-door deposition with lawmakers as to what was said. I think we'll pretty much have to, just remains to be seen. The uh, Biden, however, he said, apparently he told the lawmakers that you have built your entire partisan house of cards on lies told by the likes of Gail Luft, uh, Tony Bobulinski, Alexander Smirnoff. And he said, for more than a year, your committee have hunted me in your partisan political pursuit of my dad. Also, comedian Richard Lewis passed away yesterday at the age of 76. Lewis died um, peacefully at his home in Los Angeles. And apparently his, his publicist says he suffered a heart attack and, uh, and took his life. So his wife, Joyce Lipinski, thanks everyone for all the love, friendship, and support, and, of course, asking for privacy at this time. Um, Lewis was, he had, a, he had, I thought, a really wonder, he was self-deprecating, and that was one of his strengths. He was just great at it. He had this self-deprecating sense of humor, and I love stuff like that. He was really great, started his career in comedy clubs, and then later on he, you know, started appearing on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson and others. And then, um, of course, he was on um, Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> he, was, he was just terrific. Uh, have you watched that? It's a, great, it's a great show, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Funny, funny show. And Richard Lewis is a big part of that. Monica Lewinsky is back in the news. She is the face. Uh, now, this is a weird combination, isn't it? She's the new fa- uh, um, face of a new workwear line and a voter registration drive. That was launched this week. By this, uh, it's a sustainable clothing brand called Reformation. And I thought, well, that's kind of an odd combination, isn't it? Uh, um, We've got a new workwear line and we're launching a get out the vote effort. (laughs) It's just like, what? (laughs) I mean, had a little trouble wrapping my arms around that. So the uh, Reformation. Spokespeople said of Lewinsky, Monica's been empowering women to use their voices and feel powerful for a long time, so it just makes sense that she'd help us do the same. And while great clothes won't fix everything, putting them on and going to the polls is a pretty good place to start. No argument here. Also, um... Did you see the uh, son of Representative Lauren Boebert has been arrested and charged with a series of thefts this week? This was announced on Tuesday, and uh, Tyler Boebert is 18, currently in custody, and this is the uh, Rifle Colorado Police Department. He was arrested in connection with a spree of vehicle trespasses and thefts of property. So the charges against him compromised four felony counts related to the criminal possession of uh, identification documents involving multiple victims. There's also a felony count of conspiracy to commit a felony And then more than 15 counts of misdemeanor, petty offenses, they said. 
And uh, I saw another story also this morning. Lauren, Lauren Boebert been responding to this and saying, well, her son's going to have to face up to these, you know, she's going to have to face up to the charges. Also, just as Marianne Williamson had announced that she put her her presidential race on high, you know, on hiatus, suspending her can her campaign. Right? She did this what last week? So she suspended her campaign, and now she's already unsuspended her campaign. <laughs> She said she was uh, doing it. I I had suspended it because I was losing the horse race, but something so much more important than the horse race is at stake here, and we must respond, says Marianne Williamson. Right now we have a fascist standing at the door. Everybody's all upset about it. Well, we should be upset about it, but we're not going to defeat the fascists by... Well, by what? What is President Biden offering? What is he saying beyond, you know, the economy is doing really well? So she's bringing her brand of lunacy back to the back to the presidential race. She's one of the Democrats then challenging Joe Biden. Also, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton has sued the parent company, a porn hub. And he says they have violated state law by failing to implement age verification measures. Um, these measures make sure that children then cannot access sites that are meant for adults only. And so they are, this company has been accused of violating Texas law. Sony announced this week that uh, they will cut about 900 jobs at their PlayStation unit and shut down a studio in London. Video game industry struggling to recover uh, from a post-pandemic slump. And so some nine hundred jobs getting axed at uh, Sony. Sony said the layoffs will impact several PlayStation studios, uh, including Insomniac. That's the studio behind uh, one of the uh, Spider-Man, Naughty Dog, number of others. And um, boils down to... Uh, Three of these studios are Sony's most successful subsidiaries, according to Bloomberg. So cutting staff. Also, uh, Edith uh, Cesarelli, she may remember her name because she recently celebrated her 116th birthday. She was known as the oldest living American. She sadly has passed away. So she died 17 days after her 116th birthday, according to family. And that's a look at the stories trending this morning in Bell's News Gallery. 